بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد We're still speaking about the tremendous chapter and the tremendous principle from the fundamental principles of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and that is obedience to the rulers. We left off our discussion speaking about those revolutionaries who they commit more harm than good when they make these revolutions and they revolt and the like. And the Shaykh Hafidhullah Ta'ala, the Allama, Shaykh Rabi'i Al-Madkhani Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that you will find from the likes of these individuals various things. From them, uh, from uh, calling to and establishing the unity of the religions calling to and trying to establish the unity of the religions or what other people call yeah, the interfaith dialogue the likes of these things, calling to these things you find that churches become erected the relations between the Muslims and the, and, the, and the Kufar in the light or in way or under the gaze of or guise of uh, being good to the Kufar and establishing the lights of these relationships you find that a lot of times the Muslims get belittled in the name of being good to the kuffar and the like and the impoverishment of the Muslims and the destruction of their deen and of their dunya of their religious and worldly affairs and so on and so forth from the likes of these things and the shaykh he says and these revolutionaries you'll find them making many promises during the course of the revolution and uh, shortly thereafter you find them making many promises on what they're going to do and how they're going, things are going to be different and offering up all these promises and the like and the shaykh he says you find that most of the time it's just empty speech that brings, that brings about no fruit you don't find any real change uh, and you'll find that these individuals, these revolutionaries they don't do anything which makes them distinct from other than them it's just the same old, same old the shaykh he says in light of the understanding of these things in which take place, the Shaykh he says, Eden, he says, so therefore, we don't trust these people. He said, therefore, we don't trust the likes of these individuals. Naam. He says, Ha'ula al wusul al karasi. He said, but these individuals, really what is important to them is the attainment of leadership. By any means necessary. Whatever it takes to get there. Whatever it takes to get rulership, they get the rulership, and that's really all they're worried about. They're not worrying about these things and these slogans of which they're campaigning on and so on and so forth. But they're only worrying about reaching the leadership. The Shaykh says, ثُمَّ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ يُدَيِّرُونَ ظُهُورَهُمْ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ He said that after that, you will find that these individuals, they turn their backs on Al-Islam. They turn their backs on Al-Islam. How many of the revolutionaries make the claim that we have to make the revolution because the ruler is doing such and such which is un-Islamic. The ruler is ruling us in a way which is un-Islamic. But then as soon as they get the rulership, what do they do? They rule by ways that are democratic or by, uh, that are communist or the like. They themselves rule by other than al-Islam. Now, so you find that once they actually get the rulership and they get what they were looking for, then they turn their backs on al-Islam. The truth then comes out. The Shaykh, he says, Kama Jarabsum wa araftum. He said, just like you know and you're aware of. Just like you have experience and you are aware of. Huna wa hunak fil buldan kathira 
ثم أحيانا تأتون بإنقلاب باسم الإسلام فينقلب عليهم شيوعي أو أي منهج ضل آخر the shaykh he says and then even sometimes or you, know, you have seen this taking place here and there in this country many countries you've seen the likes of these things taking place the shaykh he says even there are often times even sometimes and in some occasions you find that they'll bring a revolution they'll bring a coup or revolution in the name of Islam so they'll say this is an Islamic revolution right sometimes they say this is an Islamic revolution so then they do the revolution but then after the revolution what happens you find them eventually what becoming communists or any other minhaj from the astray minhaj you find them ruling their governments by way of this so they claim it's Islamic right but then when they take over and they rule then all of a sudden now it becomes a democracy or it becomes a communist state uh, and, and, and so on and so forth or it becomes a socialist state now, from these other uh, types of methodologies and, and ways uh, that are astray. So don't be fooled by the likes of these individuals. Don't be fooled by that which they're claiming. Now, the Shaykh he says, إن الحكمة في توجيهات هذا الشارع الحكيم الرحيم الرؤوف السجاع البطل والذي يربي الأمة على سجاعة لكن في هذا الباب يقول لهم اصبروا مهما رأيتم اصبروا مهما رأيتم إلا الكفر he says but you find therefore you find that the wisdom the intense wisdom of the one who is wise he legislated meaning the one who was wise in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he legislated upon the Muslims a legislation that is filled with wisdom the one who is the all wise the most merciful the most compassionate uh, uh, one who is brave and heroic the one who teaches the ummah and instills it within the ummah to be brave uh, because you find this is what you know, Islam it teaches us Islam instills in us to be brave it instills in us to be heroic and the like but you find that in this particular affair, in this particular issue, that what that we have been commanded in Al-Islam to be patient, despite what we may see from difficulties, despite what we may see from oppression, from tyranny, despite what we may see from khalal uh, uh, or deficiencies and the like, that we are to be patient, despite what we see, except if we see disbelief. If we see kufr, bawah, it's something different. We see disbelief, then that's something different. Naam. But this is the reality. This is the reality. That the religion of Islam it teaches us like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He mandates us to be like this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He commands us to be like this. Naam. To be patient. To be patient. And this is not taking away from one being brave. This is not taking away uh, from one being heroic. This does not mean that one is cowardly because he's patient and the like, but rather patience shows true bravery. Uh, patience, it shows true heroicness and the like. The Shaykh, he says, وَهُنَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسُوقَهَا لَكُمْ حَتَّى تُسَجِّلْ The Shaykh, he says, and there are some hadith that I want to I want to bring them now and mention them so that they may be memorized and written down so that they may, may be recorded, memorized and written down now, so these are some uh, uh, hadith which we want you to pay close attention to the first hadith is a hadith that's been collected by Al-Bukhari by Imam Al-Bukhari Rahimahullah Ta'ala now, and hadith is hadith sahih عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال now I want you to pay close attention to these ahadith. 
Because these ahadith, it shows us the reality and the true belief when it comes to this affair of uh, obeying the rulers and being dutiful and giving the rulers their rights uh, and so on and so forth. Naam. And it also shows you the reality of what's going to happen or who holds them responsible for giving us our rights. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, كانت بنو إسرائيل تسوسهم الأنبياء كلما هلك نبي خلفه نبي He said that the children of Israel their rulers used to be prophets their rulers used to be prophets نعم. every time a prophet passed away then there will come another prophet after him now, that every time a prophet passed away, there'll come another prophet after him. Because we know the children of Israel, they had prophets in succession. Every time one passed away, he died, another one came. Now, every time one passed away, another one came. So let's check. When you have the prophet around, then the prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he's going to be the ruler. Now, so this was, the, this was the fact for the children of Israel. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam went on to say, وَأَنَّهُ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي he said, but there's going to be no prophet after me. Now, meaning that this nation is going to be different. After me, it's not going to come another prophet to be your ruler because there's no prophet after me. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَسَتَكُونُوا خُلَفَاء فَتَكْفُرُوا He said, but rather there will be khulafa, there will be khalifas, and there will be many. But after me, there will be what? Many khalifas. Now, not prophets, but khalifas, khulafa. So, the Sahaba they say, "Qalu, wa ma ta'muruna, wa la ta'muruna." They say, "So what do you command us to do?" Naam, meaning with regards to how we interact and how we treat these khulafa, these rulers after you. How do you command us to be with them? How are we supposed to treat them? Naam. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said. فُو بَيْعَةِ الْأَوَّلِ فَالْأَوَّلِ وَأَعْتُوهُمْ حَقَّهُمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ سَائِلُهُمْ عَمَّا أَسْتَرْعَاهُمْ He said, So give allegiance. Give the allegiance. And obey. And give the bay'ah. To the first of them, then the first of them. Naam. So give the Pledge of Allegiance to them, to these Khulafa. As they come, give them the Pledge of Allegiance. وَأَعْتُوهُمْ حَقَّهُمْ And give them their rights. Give them their rights. You give them their rights. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَائِلُهُمْ Because verily Allah He will ask them, عَمَّ اسْتَرْعَاهُمْ Allah Ta'ala he will ask them all about the fulfillment of the rights over those whom they have been given authority over and, and over those who they are responsible for. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us or the Prophet وسلم, and thus Allah ta'ala na'am, is commanding us to obey the rulers. Allah Ta'ala in the Noble Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu in the Sunnah, this is an example from that. He commands us, they command us to obey the rulers, to obey the rulers. So the Prophet Sallallahu he said, so obey them and give them bay'ah. Obey them and give them bay'ah. Naam. Fu bi bay'atil awwal. So obey them and give them bay'ah. Tayyib. And give them their rights. Wa a'atuhum haqqahum. Give them their rights. Because verily with regards to who is responsible from, t- from holding the rulers to account is not those who are being ruled. Okay, it's not the ra'iyya. Okay, those who are being ruled, they are not the ones who hold the ruler to account. But rather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informs us, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَائِلُهُمْ عَمَّ اسْتَرْعَاهُمْ But Allah will ask them. Allah will question them about those whom they have been given authority over. 
about those whom they are responsible for. Allah will hold them account for the fulfillment of the rights of those who they are responsible over. Now that's important to understand. Who is the one who will hold the rulers to accountability? Because this is something that many people nowadays, they are unaware of. They don't know. Who are those who are going to hold the rulers to accountability? They thinking that it's something other than what it really is. So therefore, they put upon themselves that which is not their right to put upon themselves. Now, so the shaykh, he says, كَيْفَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَائِلُهُمْ عَمَّ اسْتَرْعَاهُمْ He said, how is this? Do you see that Allah Ta'ala will hold them accountable for that and those whom they are responsible for? Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold them accountable for those who they are responsible for and they have been given authority over. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he did not say Hasabuhum. The Prophet والسلام, he did not tell the Muslims you take account of them. You hold them to account. Because they asked, what should our relationship be with them? The Prophet ﷺ, he explained, Fu bi bay'atil awwal fal awwal. Give them the bay'ah. Obey them. Na'am, obey them. Fa'atahum, or fa'atuhum, and to give them haqqahum, their rights. This is how the Prophet ﷺ told us. Obey them, give them the bay'ah, give them the pledge of allegiance, and give them their rights. That's our relationship. Na'am. Now, this is what he told the people how they to be with the rulers. To give them the bay'ah, to give them the bay'ah, give them the pledge of allegiance, and to give them, to give them their rights. Now, give them their rights. Because verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold them accountable for what? For they, how they treat us. Allah is going to hold them accountable to how they treat us. Now, it's not for us to hold them accountable. So thus the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't say, He didn't say, hold them to account. Take them to account. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't say, He didn't say, revolt against them. Hold them to account, revolt against them. Uh, he didn't say, uh, go out and revolt. Disobey them and revolt them, revolt against them and the like. He didn't say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khudu Hakkakum. He didn't say, take your rights from them. You see? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't tell us, take your rights from them. Because as the Shaykh he goes on to explain, he says, He said, because you find that the revolutionaries, from the, the leaders and the big ones who are amongst the revolutionaries. They don't say this, they tell you something else. They say things like, Manam Tadr al Faraj, Yatina min as Sama. They say things like, We're not gonna wait for the victory to come down from the heaven. You might have heard this before. Ala Kullan, you find that the ones who are these revolutionaries and the like, they say things like we don't wait for the victory to come down from the heavens. That's what they say. They say, لَبُدْ أَنْ نَأْخُذْ حَقَّنَا بِأَيْدِينَا They said, rather it is incumbent that we take our rights. أَنْ نَأْخُذْ حَقَّنَا بِأَيْدِينَا We take our rights with our own hands. That's what they tell you to do. Take your right with your own hands. They say things like, أَيُّهَا الْجَمَاهِيرِ خُذُوا حَقَّكُمْ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ They say things in their rallies like, Oh community, your old people, take your rights with your own hands. For إنه لن تمتد إليكم أي يد بهذا الحق. They say things because they say take your right with your own hands because there's not going to be anyone going to give you these rights. No one's going to give you these rights. Take it yourself because no one is going to hand them over to you. Now, Subhanallah. Does this sound like what the Prophet ﷺ was talking about? La. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, give them the Pledge of Allegiance, obey them, right? Obey them and give, give them their rights. Give them their rights. And Allah will question them about whether or not they gave you your rights. This is the meaning, yeah. Allah Ta'ala will ask them about those in their authority over. Meaning that what? Allah will hold them, hold them to account on whether or not they gave 
to those who they were ruling over their rights or not. Nah. But these individuals, they, 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 they make this claim and they talk about, but what about this atrocity? What about this the evil that's happening? What about that bad thing that's happening? So on and so forth. But let us put things into perspective. Let us put things into perspective. The Shaykh he says, لا غيرة على دين على دين الله وعلى أمة نعم. He said these ones they don't have any jealousy. They have no jealousy about Allah Taala's religion and about the Ummah. But yeah, he says, وَأَغْيَرُ النَّاسِ Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says that the greatest, the one who had the greatest jealousy for or from mankind was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, the one who was the most jealous was the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And as it comes in the hadith, وَقَالَ لِسَعَدْ He said to Sa'ad, وَاللَّهِ أَنَا أَغْيَرُ مِنْكَ وَاللَّهِ أَغْيَرُ مِنِّي He said to Sa'ad, he said that verily I'm more jealous than you and Allah is more jealous than me. Naam. And this is when Sa'ad, لَمَّا قَالَ Sa'ad رضي الله تعالى عنه. This is when Sa'ad he said, أرأيت إذا وجدت رجلا مع زوجتي أتي بأربع شهود والله لا أضربنه بالصيف غير مصفح. He said, this is what Sa'ad he said. He said, by Allah, if I find a man with my wife, I'm supposed to bring four witnesses. He said, by Allah, I will hit that man with my sword before that. You see, he said, if I find a man with my wife, he said, then by Allah, I'm going to hit that man with my sword. Meaning what? Before bringing four witnesses. I'm not going to wait to get four witnesses. I'm going to hit him with my sword. That's it. Now, وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَتَعْجَبُونَ مِنْ غَيْرَةِ السَّعَدِ He said, are you amazed at the jealousy of Sa'ad? He said, وَاللَّهِ لَأَنَا أَغْيَرُ مِنْهُ He said, by Allah, I'm more jealous than Sa'ad. Wallahu aghyaru minni and Allah is more is more jealous than me. Women ajil, huh? Men ajli dalika harram al fawahish. He said, and for that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he prohibited all types of illegal sexual uh, intercourse and relations. Naam. For Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi He was jealous about the deen of Allah. Of Allah. Naam, he was jealous, meaning that he didn't put nothing before it. Yani he was jealous. He held on to it. Uh, he was he was he was uh, concerned for the welfare of the Muslims in that. And the Prophet وسلم, he was jealous and he was concerned, so he didn't want the spread of of uh, of of, uh, of evil. And the spread of lewdness. The Prophet ﷺ, he didn't want the spread of lewdness. He didn't want the spread of evil and the like. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was more jealous, more concerned than we are. Now, because you find these people, they come and they say, but what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And the spread of this? And the spread of that? And look at the corruption? And so on and so forth. The Prophet ﷺ, he was more concerned. He was more concerned. He was more jealous for the Muslims, meaning that he didn't want no harm to come to the Muslims. He didn't want any bad thing to spread amongst the Muslims. He didn't want any form of corruption or tyranny or anything like this to happen to the Muslims. He was more jealous and concerned about the welfare of the Muslims than we are concerned about the, our own welfare. And with all of that, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Atuhum haqqahum." Give them their rights. Give them their rights. For in Allah. سَائِلُهُمْ عَمَّ اسْتَرْعَاهُمْ Because Allah will question them about that they are in authority over. Or about the fulfillment of the rights of those who they are in authority over. So you find now, when it comes to being concerned about good reaching the Muslims, 
Who was more concerned about that than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? No one. When it comes to the affair of uh, knowing the best way of gaining or the attainment of good for the Muslims and, 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 and welfare and well-being for the Muslims, who knew the best way to attain that better than the Prophet sallallahu No one. But yet the Prophet, you find, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he told us to behave with the rulers in, in this way, which shows you what, which shows you that this is the only way on which we will attain those things that we claim that we're looking for. This is the only way that the ummah will be safeguarded from those atrocities and tyrannies and so on and so forth. But it requires from us patience. It requires from us patience. It's not going to be instant gratification. It's not going to happen overnight. But when it happens, it happens. And it will be lasting. When it happens, it happens, it will be lasting. Not like these things that these people are doing. They plunge us from chaos into chaos. We go from chaos to chaos. Because they want it now. So they, so, they, so they remove one tyrant and replace it with another tyrant. From chaos to chaos. From, from, from what they fighting against to what they fighting against. As we see every day. Right? From what they fighting against to what they what they claim they fighting against to yeah, they, that thing and the like. But yeah. So it's important that we understand this reality that they were that these ones they're not more concerned with us than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he's more concerned. He's more concerned about our welfare, he's more concerned about our well being. And he's more knowledgeable of what of what will bring about a good state and more knowledgeable about what will bring about uh a rectification for those harms that we may be in. And, uh, and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, give them their rights, because verily Allah ta'ala, he's going to ask them about whether or not they gave those who they were over their rights. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, or Afwan, Shaykh Rabir, Allah ta'ala, he said, Laysat anta alladhi tuhasibu. He said, you're not the one who holds the ruler to account. That's not, that's not you. The Shaykh, he says, insahahu. Bil-ma'ruf. He said, but rather you have to give him advice. This don't mean that we just take it and be quiet. If given an opportunity, then we give the ruler our advice. We give him our advice. That means by way of a letter, email, whatever. We give him our advice. There's some provinces and some countries where the rulers come out and they have uh, sessions when they when they speak with the community and they speak with those who they're over, uh, where well you can give you they give you the opportunity to speak to them, give them the advice and so on and so forth. This is what we've been commanded to do. Uh, in Samia, if he answers, if he listens, Alhamdulillah, good. Wa a data, wajib, and if not, then you done what was was obligatory upon you. If he listens, good. Alhamdulillah, that's good. And if he doesn't listen. Then you have fulfilled that which is obligatory upon you. sabr, and you have to be patient. Madama yusalli, as long as that ruler is praying, as long as he's praying, then you have to be patient because this is the rule. This is the ruling of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa nahnu la naqul hada min indi anfusina. He said, and we do not say this. La naqul hada min indi anfusina. We don't say this from ourselves. We don't, we're not making this up. We're not saying these words from ourselves. But this is what we learned from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Shaykh, he says, but despite this, لكن هذه ثقيلة على مسامع هؤلاء وشاق على نفوسهم. He said, but you find that with all of this, these words, these words are heavy upon the hearing of these individuals, these revolutionaries. When they hear stuff like this, it's heavy upon them. And it, and it restricts their souls. They, get, they feel uncomfortable. They feel uncomfortable when they hear these words. Some of them, it enrages them to hear these words. You start saying a hadith like this, they get mad. They get upset. They get heated. They get vexed. They become uncomfortable. Naam. It's like this. If you do a khutbah like this, sometimes you see them starting to move around in their they seat. They get uncomfortable. They can't sit still. They start go flopping back and forth, forth and back, moving, putting the leg up, putting the leg down, shaking their head, making all kinds of faces, like they're being tortured. They don't like hearing these words. But these are not my words. These are not Shaykh Rabir's words. These are not the words of, of, uh, of Imam Ahmed. These are the words of the Prophet Wasallam. And they begin upset. You recite the ayat. They get mad. What are you getting mad for? They getting mad. 
They getting upset. Huh? So what you trying to say? We supposed to stay like this? What you trying to say? We just let him go. What you trying to say? X, Y, and Z. I'm not trying to say anything. This is what the Prophet said, not try to say, said. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. This is the way it is. They're not comfortable with that though. Even though Allah Ta'ala He says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Even though Allah Ta'ala says, and no. When it, when it means no here, it means no. Like, ne- like in O. And no, no way, no. By your Lord, they do not believe. Allah Ta'ala is negating now the Iman. Huh? Or the completion thereof. He's saying, and no, no way, by your Lord. They do not truly believe until they utilize you or Muhammad as a judge and that which transpires amongst them. They utilize you as a judge and that which takes place amongst them. That they refer back to you or Muhammad وسلم, for judgment in matters that come up amongst them. Difficulties, issues, affairs amongst them. They utilize you or Muhammad as a judge between them. That until they do this, they don't truly believe. And then, and then Allah Ta'ala he says, وَرَبِّكَ And Allah swears by Himself. And no, by your Lord. By Allah. By Allah. They don't believe until they use you as a judge and that which transpires between them. Now, Not just that. ثُمَّ what? ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهَا مَحَرَجَ And then they don't find within themselves any difficulty they don't find within themselves any difficulty from your ruling and they submit to it completely this is in Surah Nisa verse 65 this is what Allah says in Surah Nisa verse 65 that no way no by your Lord they do not truly believe and so they utilize you as a judge and that which transpires amongst them and they don't find any difficulty within themselves from your ruling and they submit to it completely. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us how to be with our rulers. But yet these other ones, they say something else. You see? Now. But yeah. And then, not just they say something else. All the time, what are they saying? They making the claim that what? You're not doing that. Now, they calling the people when they saying, or they calling to the ruling by Allah's rule. Now, they, they, they calling for the ruling by Allah Ta'ala's rule. This is what their claim is. You got to rule by what Allah Ta'ala sent down. Play this what Allah Ta'ala sent down. Listen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu told you, obey them, give them their rights, make their eye, give them pledge of allegiance, so on and so forth. Be patient. Nah. But these ones, and they still come around after they get mad, after they can't sit still, after they start squiggling around like little squiggly worms and that, then they come and they say, but, we, but they're not ruling by the book of Allah. You mean to tell me be patient and rule and he's not ruling by the book of Allah? You mean to tell me be patient when this one is not ruling by the book of Allah? You mean to tell me be patient when that one ain't ruling by the book of Allah? This is what you're trying to do? Then the shaykh, he says, he says what? He says, Thumma la yuhakkimun Allah. Uh, wa la yuhakkimun Rasulullah. He said, but they themselves, they don't rule by Allah, but they don't rule by the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. They say, hey, but they don't rule by Allah. The, the president don't rule by Allah. The king don't rule by Allah. The sultan he don't rule by Allah. The sheikh he don't rule by Allah. He don't rule by the rule of Allah. This is what they saying, right? But they themselves don't rule by the by 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 by, by yeah, the, uh, the rule of Allah Taala nor the son of the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi They don't rule by it. Ahl al bidah they don't rule by it. The hizbiyin they don't rule by it. They don't rule by the book of Allah and the son of the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi But yet they claim it. This is why we got to revolt. We got to revolt because they're not ruling by the book of Allah. Hey, your, your revolution is is, is 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 not by the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what do you, yeah, they don't rule by the book of Allah. They don't rule by the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sheikh goes on. He says he brings some examples. He says, "Wa'ahl al-Bid'ah yaqulun bil-halul wa'ahl al-wujud." He said that the people of Bid'ah they claim that Allah Taala is is one with His creation and that He's within His creation. This is what they saying. That's not by the book of Allah. This Bid'ah that they bring. Allah Ta'ala, He's not a part of the creation. Allah Ta'ala, He is, he is separate from the creation. 
As Allah Ta'ala makes clean the Qur'an. Naam. And these ones, يُكَفِّرُونَ الْأُمَّةِ They say that the Muslims are kuffar. Okay, launching kufr against a Muslim. That's from Islam? La, that's not from Islam. A Muslim drink alcohol, they say, oh, he a kafir because he drunk alcohol. That's from Islam? La, that's not from Islam. A Muslim fornicate, they say, oh, he a kafir because he committed fornication. That's from Islam? No, it's not from Islam. That, 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 that individual who used to drink, he used to drink during the time of the Prophet Wasallam. And some, and, some, and some of the Sahaba, they were criticizing him. They were coming down real hard on him. Now, what did the Prophet ﷺ say to them? He said, do not help shaitan against your brother. Do not help shaitan against your brother. Now, the Prophet ﷺ, he, 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 he uh, established a khuwa for the one who drunk alcohol. So this means what? The one who drink alcohol, he's not a kafir. He's a Muslim. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, your brother. Our brothers are ikhwa. Huh? They're Muslims. Muslims. So it's important. Don't refer to people as brother except that they're Muslim. You understand? Brother is not a word synonymous for black man. What's up, brother? How you doing, brother? La. In the minuna ikhwa. Verily, the believers are brothers. The believers are brothers. So brothers is what? The Muslims. So the Prophet Sallallahu he established for what? For this one, akhuwa, that he's our brother. And then the Prophet Sallallahu he said, فَإِنَّهُ يُحِبَّ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهُ Because verily he loves Allah and he loves, uh, and he loves the Messenger of Allah. About who? About the one who drank alcohol. That he loved Allah and he loved the Messenger of Allah. But this one he had a problem. The point is, the shahid is here that what? This one drank alcohol and the Prophet he didn't make takfir on him. He didn't say, oh you drank alcohol, you a kafir. La, he didn't say that. But you find that people now saying stuff like that. Drunk alcohol, kafir. Went to a nightclub, kafir. Went to a sweet 16, kafir. A'udhu billah. He's a sinner. Naam, he's a sinner. But he's not a kafir. So them calling him a kafir, that's ruling by the book of Allah? No. Uh, and then they say things like what? وَيَقُلُونَ بِخَلْقُ Quran. And then they say the Quran is created. That's by the rule of Allah? La. La. Naam. That's not by the, that's not by the, the, the rule of Allah Ta'ala. As we have already studied and took inside this magnificent book, is that what? The Qur'an, Kalam Allah, Ghayr al-Makhluq, the Qur'an is the speech of Allah, it's not created. But, so these people who saying all this stuff and doing all these types of bid'ah, and other than that from bid'ah, this is just an example of what they be doing. They don't rule by the rule of Allah. They don't rule by Allah Ta'ala's rule. Right? And, you'll find in reality, لا يردون الرجوع إلا حكمية الله تعالى في مثل هذه القضايا He said, but you'll find that they are not pleased to return to Allah's rule in the likes of these affairs. You understand? Because from Al-Islam, you don't revolt against the rulers. From Al-Islam, the Prophet ﷺ, he told us you don't revolt against them. Allah Ta'ala, He commands us to obey them. The Prophet ﷺ commands us to obey them, give them their rights. But yet you find what? When it comes to these affairs, they don't want to hear about these rulings. No, 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 we don't want to hear about what Islam say about that. We got to do what we got to do. They say, don't wait for it to come from the sky. Don't, you got to get it with your own hands. Take what's yours. So on and so forth. Subhanallah. Ya salam. This is complete dolala. So the shaykh, he says, فَهُمْ أَبْعَدِ nas. He says, so they are from the furthest people but ruled by Allah Ta'ala's book. It's amazing, as we, as we mentioned before, you find these ones, they come and they tell you, or they blame the ruler for not ruling by, for not ruling the lands by Islam. But these ones, they don't rule themselves by Islam. They will blame the ruler. He's not ruling the land by Islam. They don't want to rule himself by Islam. Nor does he rule his family by Islam. Look at his family, see all these un-Islamic things. Look at himself, all these un-Islamic things, and so on and so forth. But then he's going to blame the ruler. Yes, Salah. Yes, Salah. Huh? And he said, La hukmu illa lillah. There's no rule except to Allah. Naam. No judgment except that for Allah and the like. Wahum uh, nas. But they are from the uh, the most severe of the people, huh? away from Allah Ta'ala's rule and away from the establishing the commandments and the rule from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Shaykh says, Hadhi a hadith. He said, these are a hadith. Naam. These a hadith that we're speaking about, this is not a game. Huh? 
This is not a game. This is not playing around. But these individuals, when you recite to them the likes of these ahadith, now listen, we're talking about a hadith, a statement from the Prophet wasallam. But you find that when you speak like this, and when you tell, tell them the sunnah, you recite the likes of these ahadith, you hear statements like this, like they say, هَذَا تَأْيِيلُ الْكُفَارِ وَالْمُلَاحِدَ they say this only helped the kufar and only helped yani, the, uh, the heretics. This is what they, subhanallah, it only helped the kufar and it only helped uh, the atheists and the like. This is what they say. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam helped the kufar. Subhanallah, what are you talking about? But this is what they say. When you come and you, and you speak like this and, and, and you hear responses like this. Oh, this only helped the kufar. Only people benefit from the likes of this is the kufar. You know, and and, uh, and the like. All oh, you people, you just want to see any uh, defend the ruler. Nah, it's not about defending the ruler. It's about being jealous about Islam. It's about standing up for what is right. Teaching what Islam is about. Because you know the reality is that what Allah is going to ask them about those who they were in charge over. If they stole from us, if they took our rights, if they oppressed us, if they were tyrannical and the like, you think they're not going to get what they deserve? Huh? You think they're going to slide? You think they're going to get away? You think they're not going to get what they deserve? Really? Huh? They're going to get what they deserve. They're going to be rewarded, either good or bad, for what they did. If they didn't do right, they're going to be punished. If they did right, they'll be rewarded. So they don't get away. They don't, they don't, they don't escape scot-free. They're going to get theirs. This is what we have to understand. But the reality of it is, as they're going to come in another hadith, in which we're going to see, inshallah ta'ala, probably not in this class because the time is, 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 is elapsing, but in the next class, bin Allah ta'ala, as we're going to see, is that what? Is that they're going to be held responsible for what they do, and we're going to be held responsible for what we do. You understand? You understand? But yeah. This is an important concept to understand and to remember. Is that whatever they do from evil, they're going to have to carry the burden from that. But whatever we do from evil, we're going to have to carry the burden for that. If, 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 if we give them their rights, then we will be rewarded because we did what we were supposed to do. If they don't in turn give us our rights, then they're going to be held accountable. They're going to be punished for not giving us our rights. But the reality of it is, is that if we fight a wrong with a wrong, they wrong, we wrong, they get punished, we get punished. They are responsible for what they do. And we're going to be responsible for what we do. So you can't come and say now, it's their fault. They made me do it. That's why I had to do X, Y, and Z. Just because somebody else is wrong, what does that got to do with you? That's the question of the day. Just because someone else does something wrong, what does that have to do with you? If someone comes and they steal from you, right? They steal from you. That person committed an act of theft against you. You understand? Does that give you the right to turn around and go steal from him? No. It doesn't. That person steals from you. That means now I can go steal from him? Nah. If he steals from me, he'll be held accountable for stealing from me. But now if I go and do the same thing and steal from him, then guess what? Now I'm held accountable for stealing from him. You understand? Because two wrongs will make a right. Two wrongs is me I'm both in trouble. That's all. He oppressed me, does that give me right to turn around and oppress him? Nah. He oppressed me, he's going to carry the burden of that. He's going to be held accountable for that. And, and you know what's going to happen? Yom al I'm going to get my right back from him. You understand? Yom al I'm going to get my right from him. He took my right. Yom al you will see him face to face and he give you back your right. But it's not going to be no D, it's not going to be no, uh, excuse me, no, uh, no money right then. So if, he, so, if he, so, so if he took from your rights in the dunya by way of money, wealth, property, honor, whatever, he can't come to your Qiyamah and give it back now. Say, oh man, you know, I, I took the sum of a hundred thousand dollars, it really was yours, I squandered it, here it go. No, it's no money, your Qiyamah. I took from your reputation, I oppressed you. Huh? He can't, he can't turn around and speak good to you now. Nah, it's over. It's no money, Yom al There's no repaying like this. Yom al repaying deeds. He repays in deeds. He got good deeds, you take from them. 
If all his good, de- if all his good deeds get taken up, right? Somebody say, but well, all his good deeds got taken up. Then, then you know what happened? Then now he starts to take from you your evil deeds. He take your sins. You got no deeds to give? I got sins. Take them. Take them. So who? So who loses? The oppressor. He loses, even though he may have died a multi-billionaire. Even though he may have died on the, on the finest of, of couches, eating the finest of foods, yeah, and he married to the finest of women, driving the finest of vehicles, living in the finest of houses, so on and so forth. If he dies as an oppressor, oppressing others, then what's going to happen? He's going to lose your Muqiyama. Because when it's over for him, it's over. When his life is done, it's over. Now, he got to repay everybody on Muqiyama. And if he run out of good deeds, then he's going to take their bad deeds. So now who lose out? Now who lose out? You see? He loses out. But if you do what he do now, and you jeopardize meeting him and taking from his good or giving him your bad, then who loses out? Now you and him lose out. He messed up, you messed up. Now you held accountable. You understand? So when you look at it like this, when you look at it in the overall standpoint, you see, this is the thing. These, these revolutionaries, these ones, you'll find they, they're short-sighted. They only care about dunya. That's all they care about, the life of this world. So they can't see beyond that. They don't think beyond that, in terms of beyond that. You see, the believer, he don't think just for right now. He think in, 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 in an overall term, he sees long. He sees beyond the grave. So he be doing stuff today for, for, for beyond when he died. He do stuff for the day, so when he meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? He thinks long term. This is long term. Your general. This is long term. That's how the believer thinks. So when you look at it in a standpoint of, 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 of dunya and akhirah, Okay, your playing field now is dunya and akhirah. When you look at it in those broad in those broad terms, what's the most beneficial for the believers? Is to give them bi'a, obey them, and give them their rights. That's what's best for us. Obey them, give them their rights. Because see, the dunya is only this little bit of time right here. Okay, you got the dunya, a little bit of time. Then you got the grave, a long time. And then you got after the grave, longer than that. Because it goes it go forever. Okay? I don't have no board. Right? But if you had to put it there, you got a little bit of time. You got a big time right here. Then you got a time that don't end. Okay? So all, if all you do is looking at this little minute period of time right here. You understand? Then you lose out. It becomes clean, you lose out. You're going to give up all of this or jeopardize all of this because of that? No. No. And because we know death is soon, so okay, so be patient for this little bit of time. And I'm going to reap the, I'm going to reap the benefits when I'm in my grave. And then after that, then you realize, Khalas, I'll be patient. He take my stuff now. I'm going to get it back. He can take my stuff now because he's only taking it for a little bit of time. Right? He's taking it for a little bit of time. But I'm going to get mine back when it really counts because it's going to help me for my forever. So then you realize what's the best course of action for us? Be patient. Be patient. If he takes from us, we're going to get it back. Be patient. So what's best for the Ummah as a whole? Be patient. We already, we already spoke about the instability, uh, the weakness, and so on and so forth that's brought about with the likes of these things. The destruction of property, the loss of life, and so on and so forth. All of these things take place when you have these revolts. Instability, yani, there's a spilling of blood, and so on and so forth, which no change even comes at the end of that. And then on top of that, now you now you held responsible for all these bad things that happen because of your actions. So you was a part of the revolution. So subhanAllah, now you have the answer for all that destruction, all those people who got murdered, who got killed, all those women who got raped, and all this stuff like that. Now you come your muqiyama, you, you got all this to answer for. Because you had to be the big shot revolutionary guy. Huh? Now you got all this to talk answer for. But all you had to do was be patient. And all them grievances you claiming that you got against the ruler now, he got all that to answer for. Now we come scot free. Now we come scot free. In this situation. Now we come scot free. We gave you your right. You didn't give us our right. So now we're going to take our right back from you. Now I want my right. You're going to give it to me. 
That's the reality. Everybody can give anybody rights. It's just whether you want to give them any, uh, willingly or unwillingly. You know, willingly, you give it to them right now in the dunya. You give them their rights. Unwillingly, you know, qiyamah. But now you got to take, now, now they're taking your good deeds or you got to take their bad deeds and the like. Al kulli hal, this is one hadith which shows to us how we are to act and how we are to be with those who are over us and the fruits and the benefits that come from the likes of this hadith uh, are many but this is the first hadith uh, that the shaykh he brings that he wants us to know and he wants us to have so that we have clarity and understanding upon this particular issue uh, فا...